Praise the Lord, brethren. Um, we thank God again. In the Finding God program, we shall always rejoice. We rejoice in the Lord because he's our life. And our Lord Jesus Christ rose from the dead, defeating the powers of death. And the Bible says that after 40 days, in the period of 40 days, he presented himself alive to the people that had gone timid, the people that had hidden themselves, the people that had been eaten away by fear. And therefore, the Lord Jesus Christ went about recovering them one by one. And so one by one, including Peter, um, Simon, and the others of the 12. And so we as church, we shall continue praising the Lord for the power of the resurrection because it is our life. That is what we need in most times because when we talk about the resurrection, we are talking about another chance. I'm lifting two fingers because many times people call it second chance, but for me, I call it another chance that Jesus Christ died and he was given another chance to rise up. And because he, resur he resurrected, he gives us hope, you and I. And so friends, we are here to pray the Lord. And this message of the resurrection is our benchmark, is our yardstick, is our pillar. That's why we preach with hope and because Christ rose from the dead. Now, I come with the lady, Mary Magdalene. Actually, she will have so much that she teaches us. We have talked about her because actually she was the first evangelist. She was the first witness to the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so Mary Magdalene gives us a story, lives without a message, the message of redemption, the message of recovery, the message of hope. A weeping woman at the resurrection of the Lord Jesus was at the tomb. And so we shall base ourselves on the gospel according to John chapter 20. And we are going to read not many verses, but we can begin from verse 11, but let me concentrate on verse 15, 16, and 17. Now from verse 11, of course, Mary Magdalene sees the risen Lord. That's what we make, we find the message there. And now here in verse 15, when she was weeping, because she thought that actually Jesus' body had been stolen or somebody had taken him away, Jesus said to her, he was alive, standing by, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? She is supposing to be the she is supposing him to be the gardener, said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. And verse 16, Jesus said to her, Mary, he called by her by name. She turned and said to him, Rabon, Rabon, which means teacher. And verse 17, Jesus said to her, do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my father, but go, go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father and to, the, to my God and your God. Very powerful message. Jesus meets Mary, or rather Mary meets Jesus, and she calls him teacher. And so Jesus tells Mary, go and tell my brothers. And this go is a command, like we see the commission that we find in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. And so Jesus commissions Mary to go and become an apostle to the apostles. He sends her to go and encourage them and tell them, I've seen the Lord, and he's preparing to ascend to the Father because he had told them, I go to God, I go to heaven, I go to my Father, and I prepare places for you, and there I will come and take you. Where I am, you will also be. And so this is the commission that the Lord Jesus Christ gives to Mary to go and tell the apostles. So Mary was a woman that had had a challenging past. Mary was a woman that had had demons in her. Jesus had freed her from the demons. Jesus had restored this woman. And because of the restoration, because of uh, what Jesus had done and redeemed her, she also supported Jesus' ministry. So she was commissioned by Jesus because actually she looked back, she must have looked back at her history and seen how devastated she had been. 
And the story of the demon possession, we read it in Luke chapter 8, verses 1 to 3. And Jesus find, goes along with, with his disciples to ministry. And in these verses, Luke 8, 1 to 3, um, they mention a number of women. And in verse 3, they mention Mary, um, Mary from whom seven, seven, seven demons had been chased out. And the Bible said that actually um, she was demon possessed and seven of them were in her, meaning literally Mary was a mad woman and she's recovered. She was given another chance to serve. And after Jesus had done that to her, what could she pay? So she followed Jesus Christ. And the Bible says that she supported Jesus' ministry alongside other women. She supported Jesus' ministry using the finances, using, you know, many, many things. And so one of the lessons that we pick from Mary Magdalene is this. Many times we sing a song that he has done so much for me and I cannot tell it all. Yes, he has done so much for you, but what also have you done for the Lord? So Mary Magdalene gives us a challenge that after Jesus had done so much for her, she supported Jesus' ministry alongside other women. So friends, this is a very big lesson from Mary Magdalena and she gave all, she gave time. And the reason why many of us also keep keeping on. Why? Because we look back and see how the Lord has done for us and how much and what he has done for us. And so when I look at my history, I say, what can I give him? Then I come out and say, I must serve the Lord. Go along, minister. Go along, meet other people's needs because the Lord has also done so much for you. And so it is an encouraging, it's an encouraging message that we derive from this woman. And so Mary, Mary's story encourages us to trust in God's power, to trust in God's mercy, to trust in God's love. And she gives us everything here in as far as God's love is, in as far as God's power is, and as far as God's love is. And if Jesus Christ had done it all for her, liberating, saving her, redeeming her from the powers of darkness. So we are given a chance also to mend our ways. Her past did not cling on her. She mended and she continued participating in the proclamation of the good news. So friends, Mary's story is a story of recovery. Mary's story is a story of redemption. Mary's story is a story of another chance. And so when God heals you, and so when God liberates you from whatever forces of the enemy, what do you give to him? And so Mary does the work here. Now another issue that actually we discover from this woman is that um, Mary proves to us that nobody is beyond redemption. Nobody. You and I are not beyond. And even these people that are masquerading with all sorts of things, God can liberate them. God can save them. God can redeem them. You see Mary saved with seven demons. She, we could count her beyond repair. Because um, like the other man whom Jesus healed, when he asked him, what is your name? And the man said, I'm legend. Legend, there were so many. And he said, the man said, we are so many of us here. And so there is nobody which, who is beyond redemption, who is beyond Christ's power. And so Mary Magdalena gives us that story that there are no boundaries and there is everything is possible. He had said it himself. All things are possible with God. So friends, everything is possible with God. And just like the seven demons left Mary Magdalene, anything can live. And so many of us have trusted that it may not be maybe demons that attack your head. But it may be poverty, it may be joblessness, it may be childlessness. And all those are things that actually that bother us indeed. And maybe your children have gone to school and you have no, they, have not, they have no jobs. Maybe lots of things are not happening well with you. But Mary gives us a, a, a lesson to pick from here. And I've already mentioned, and we all know that Mary became an apostle to the apostles they, they had hidden themselves. And Jesus tells him, he tells her, go and tell my brothers. Now, what does it mean therefore to us, you and me, that when recovery comes, when you meet 
personally with the Lord Jesus Christ. When you find God, you also enable other people to find him. You get out, you get there. And are you in the neighborhood? Do your neighbors know anything? Do you share with them Christ that is crucified? How about, are you at work? Your bosses or your colleagues at work? You know, now we parents, our children, do we speak to them about Christ? Well, how about, you know, um, they, you are a child. Do your parents know? So it is actually Jesus saying, giving us the way to go. Go and tell my brothers. And so friends, this is something very important that we learn from this lady. And may God help you and me that we shall reach out like Mary did reach out to the, the disciples that had hidden themselves. And after they had heard, this is when they ran out. And then Peter runs fast, and then the other disciple. And then we are told that actually Peter, because he was old, he ran slowly, but the other one overtook him. Now, why did they run out? They ran out because Mary Magdalena had given them the story that I've met, I've met the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we thank God for these stories because they are encouragement. They give us uh, new leads. We, we live on another another time, another opportunity, another day, another month. Now, one other thing that actually I discovered from Mary is that actually we do not have to be defined by our past. Remember, Mary, the demon possessed, Mary, the woman that had been, you know, uh, been having those issues, but now she is not defined by the demons, but she's defined by her devotion to the Lord. And how I pray that you also be defined by your devotion to the Lord. Mary was not defined by the demons that had departed from her, but her devotion, her financial aid to, for the ministry of the Lord, her commitment. And so we pray, I pray that God enables you to think through, to pray through, that you will be defined by your devotion, that I may be defined by my devotion, when I'm there, someone will say, yes, when this man is here, this happens. Yes, will you, may you be defined by what you do. May you be defined by what you say that glorifies God. Your commitment, your zeal, your prayerfulness, you know, your words of encouragement. And so that actually something that brings life defines you. Something that brings hope defines you when you're among the people. And so Mary was not counted, was not defined by her past. For in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, Paul says that therefore, if anyone is in Christ, is a new creature, the old is gone, the new has come. And so this is the message. The old goes, the new comes. And I'm believing so, that if there's anything old in your life that bothers you, this resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ takes it away, and you are granted in newness, something fresh, something good, something that is life-giving. And so may God who brings life, who makes things new, renew you and encourage you. So will you make the Lord Jesus Christ the center of your life? Will you make the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, uh, your hope, your joy? When you wake up in the morning, when you go to sleep in the evening, when you are about with your business, with your work, Mary gives us a lesson that we should not be defined by our past, but new, new, new. Hopes, new. Ambitions, new. Love, new. Many things. And so may God, who has started this journey in you, grant you the desire of your heart. And may he supply you according to his riches in glory. And it's because of that that Mary Magdalena leaves us a lesson. And it's a ministry of women. We have seen women do a lot of things. And Mary is the representative of all the women. And the other Marys, they have told us about the, the woman, the wife of Chusa. They, you know, women, women, women. And so may God bless all of us. But let nothing, let nothing past define you. Let not something new define you. Let something good define you. Let something wonderful define you. And so that God is glory be revealed in your life and in your home, at your workplace, and so that the environment, the surrounding, will know that actually you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. So I thank God for Mary Magdalene, for you, for her message, for her word, for her lifestyle that she was not defined by the past, but she remained devoted to the Lord Jesus Christ. And we pray that we remain the same 
in the same name Jesus Christ we pray and believe. May he keep you in Jesus' name. Amen.